Sloan, now it's time for our top five. Yes, today we have our top five, your drunken uncle hangover cures. <laughs> and we get know, off. and we know, we know. And if there, we have the this. experts of how to get over a hangover. If there's anyone out there, the two of us. Number five, Pedialyte. Because when you're hungover, you revert to being a three-year-old with a sore throat. <laughs> Mommy! <laughs> but it actually does work. If Pedialyte will hydrate you. Yeah, that's right. And, and so it, normally a hangover is dehydrated. Dehydration. And it has, you know, uh, electrolytes. Electrolytes, and shit. yeah. So it'll yeah. get you back get you back to speed in no time. Yeah, a friend of ours told us about this, Amanda from Fayetteville. Thank you, Amanda. Well done. Number four. Your mother's homemade soup. And when she, you call her to get it and you're all hung over on the line. Start crying and say, oh, I'm so sorry, mother, but I pissed and I pissed in your plants and I killed it when I was a teenager. Because that's exactly what's going to happen. You're all hung over and you start to feel bad about your mother. And she'll bring you soup. I am finding it a little disturbing that our top, our first two involve mom. <laughs> and children. And being a child. But it Dr. is Freud? true. Dr. Freud? Everyone just, it does take Freud, it Freud, anybody? Hey. As they say, it's either it's it's one thing or it's your mother, right? That's what they say in psychology. It's it's one thing or it's your mother. <laughs> All, right. All right, number three. And number three is go back to bed, fuck like it's going out of style, and crash. <laughs> yes. Yeah, that's a good one. How's that not number one? Well, it's a good choice. But it is. You, can, right. you know, I okay. just I guess I, you work I know out what the, the number you, one is going to be already. You work out the uh, you work out the poisons, I guess. Is that Wait, let's talk about this for a second. Why why is why is number 3 so useful? I mean, I get horny when I'm hungover, so I have to have sex. Horny when you're hungover is another why do you song then. Yeah, for right now. <laughs> it's just right no one steal that shit. That's the why do you song. <laughs> Horny when you're hungover. I do. I, I, unless it's like nauseous hungover, and I don't, get, I don't ever get that because I'm a drunken fucking uncle. So I just wake up and I'm like, well. I don't feel great. My hormones are kind of a little crazy. They are. They get a little crazy. Did you just say, I don't feel great, let's mate? Let's bang. Oh, because <laughs> the rhyme, like, that's mate another t shirt. That's the lyric. I don't feel great. Horny let's when you're hungover. I don't feel, I don't great. feel great, let's mate. <laughs> I don't feel great, let's make yes. And then make me a steak. <laughs> oh. I'm joking. All right, Kelly wants to get I'm, in here we, before we go to number two. So the real reason that fucking helps, because I am the queen of fucking, is Oh my God. Wait, whoa, 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 whoa. I know, but that's a great title. Because just like with fucking with a headache, it increases blood flow and it gets those, just like you said, it gets those toxins out. So if you have a headache, even though it's bad at the beginning, fucking can actually help a headache or a hangover because it increases blood flow and it moves stuff out of your kidneys and, and out of your liver. And yeah. So there's so. science. Science. Science <laughs> So fuck when you're hungover. Yeah. Yes. Oh my God. It is rocket How science. Is this not one? Wait a second, this might have to be Jesus alone. Yeah. Fucked up. Yeah. Well, because surprise, everyone surprise. everyone responds to to hangovers differently. Uh, I know a lot of people who are the last thing they want is someone touching them sexually when they're hungover. Sure, that's so fair. So it, it's it's really about that. Um, and if you're if you probably don't want to fuck hungover, then you probably can't fuck when you're hungover. Like what? you have to have consent, is what I'm saying. Oh. Back to consent, you know. If your partner is too hungover, right. they don't want to fuck, then it's well, I mean, you have to say no, but we're not talking about like somebody who's still unconscious. They're still drunk. No, it's no, a whole no. other uh, top no, no. five. Yeah. <laughs> we're talking about hungover. We're talking about hungover. <laughs> what rabbit hole are we going down? <laughs> whoa, I mean, whoa. What do you do when you're still? What, do, what do you do when you're still drunk <clears throat> to come down? Yeah. That's a whole another top five. <laughs> All right, number two, Wait. and I think a lot of people respond to this. Number two. Pig out on fried foods, oh, fried yes. mozzarella, French fries, fried cheeseburgers, fried greasy cheeseburger, man. anything, everything fried, fried Twinkies. <laughs> Just fry that shit and you'll feel better. I, I can't tell you sometimes when I'm hungover, I go get a, just a 
burger and some fries. I just think breakfast food in general. Like or even fried breakfast, potatoes, but even like fried like potatoes, like fried potatoes, like fried eggs food. And biscuits and gravy. I know there's a lot of people out there right now that are going, yeah, that's my salvation. <laughs> I'm hungover. It's something yeah. fried. It's got to be greasy. See why that's number two, Laura? I mean, no, it just. Sex is still better, but go ahead. Let's see what happens. Sometimes one is. you can have fried food and sex in the bed. Double whammy. It's just like, oh, it's like, wouldn't that be like perfect if someone like, <laughs> you rang a bell, <laughs> ring that bell, ding, 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 ding. And someone brings in, here's, here's your fried mozzarella sticks and fried mushrooms. I hope you enjoy the banging. And they walk out the door and then you're eating fried, like George on Seinfeld. You're, you're reaching out and your hand comes out of the blanket and you grab a fried mozzarella stick. And you're still having sex. <laughs> I mean, these are not mutually exclusive. You can use them yes. in tandem is what we're saying. Sure, so, right? yeah. So, but these are, these are the top ones. Okay, yeah. and number one? And number one, as everyone knows, is Hair of the Dog. The, yes. Oh, yeah, yeah. You gotta keep drinking, man. It is the tried and true. The problem with this, though, and it is tried and true, but the problem <laughs> is, I've been on three day benders because of this process. Where it's like, you wake up one Saturday, you're hungover. And then you start the Hair of the Dog process because it just, does help. And by the way, there was maybe some fucking, and there was some mozzarella sticks in that day. So I started feeling sure. better. And I'm like, yeah. And the next thing you know, I wake up Sunday. I'm like, damn. And then maybe the sex isn't available, or the mozzarella sticks haven't arrived. So you're like, well, I better have a drink. And then, damn, you land on Monday, and you're like, fuck. Yeah, there, there's definitely a cost to number one. Even though yeah. it is the most we, effective, I, it's, there's a cost. I want to do Laura's list real quick. It's really fast. Yeah. My list is... Don't drink too much. Wah, wah, <laughs> wah. <laughs> fucking buzzkill, man. <laughs> we are talking about when you've lost control, okay? I mean, like... <laughs> if you're watching your drunken uncle, Prevention the chances not. are you've had at least one hangover in your life, probably a good dozen or more. <laughs> 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 Baker's dozen. Baker's dozen. We're not yeah. talking I prevention. Mean, we're you know, we have Baker well. dozen hangovers, you know, <laughs> monthly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Come on, Laura. Cures, not prevention. <laughs> okay, that's very American of you. It's just when you've made a mistake. <laughs> oh, 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 that was awesome. Well, that's okay. True. It was an American who wrote an ounce of prevention is better than a pound of cure. That was Benjamin <clears throat> Franklin. So it's a very American thing to be. Oh, let's prevent it. No, it's like Irish to be like, oh shit, I fucked up. How am I going to get out of this? <laughs> I mean, the Irish would say, you know, uh, you want a full Irish. For a Breakfast. Yeah. Full Irish. Yeah, that's what they end up with a Guinness. You know, right. a pint of Guinness. That's right. Number one and number two, bang, yeah. together. They're, they're together. All right, so anyway. what, what are your cares? No, that was just it. Like, that was that was just me <laughs> being, <laughs> being funny. That was her being funny. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and it's no, they never.